a rough day today for the cryptocurrency markets. I mean, just ouch. Bitcoin's getting smashed. Ethereum's smashed. Altcoins, ay ay ay. Altcoins down 18, 20, 30 percent. Classic day in crypto, if you ask me. The weather is fine out here, and I do love it. But what the heck is going on? Well, in today's video, I want to take a look at the charts with you. And of course, talk about this newest news out from the Federal Reserve, which is definitely spooking the living heck out of the markets. So I'll be breaking that story down for you in this video. So make sure to watch through until the end to get all of the goods. My name is Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. If you like that topic, if you do like staying up to date with what's happening in this fast-moving cryptocurrency market, a little tap on the thumbs up button to let me know. That would be massively appreciated. So thank you very much for taking a quick moment to smash up that like button. Now let's go ahead and get into the charts to get started off with here. So as mentioned the other day, we did have that bearish crossover coming in for the daily MACD, which usually leads to more downside price pressure. Well, that's exactly what the heck we just got playing out basically to a T. Sometimes it's simpler than we imagine it when we look at these charts. Well, there we go. Keep in mind, we do still have a bullish scenario playing out in the weekly MACD. So although the shorter time frames, the daily, not looking super hot right now, the weekly still looking pretty gosh darn good. Now, this daily candle, I'd just like to point out, is ugly. That's an ugly, ugly daily candle. Of course, great for those looking to buy at cheaper prices, but overall, that kind of a daily candle tends not to, you know, instill a lot of confidence in the market, let's say. So more downside price action could be expected in the next few days. After such a brutal sell-off like that, we'll see if um, we can get the market to recover and push back higher, obviously. Now, we did come right back down to almost hit our key area of support. Basically, came into with the zone of support, so around $42,500. Now, I had a buy order in at $42,500, which at the time recording this video has not been hit yet. Maybe we'll get a little more uh, downside price action and that order will fill, which would definitely be nice. However, if we start losing too many of these support levels, well, things can get pretty rough pretty quickly, to be honest, especially if the equity markets continue in a panic over the Federal Reserve situation. Now, we did lose our 21-day exponential moving average, which is obviously showing a slowing momentum in the market. We really want to stay trading above that to say, yes, we're in a bullish trend here. Remember, the exponential moving averages respond more to recent price action. So we've seen that slowing down, going negative. Now, of course, the price slamming down below that. Really want to see the 50-day simple moving average holding as an area of price support that's just below the uh, support here at $42,500. dollars So we'll see, of course, how that actually ends up playing out. Just if we close below that, that really just says the bears have taken control of the damn market once again. Bears, man, bears. Thought those guys had gone to sleep. Apparently they are back and looking for something to eat and they want to eat your Bitcoin. Anyway, I hope my buy order gets filled personally. If it doesn't, well, you know, say it'll be, that means the market's recovering and everybody's gonna be happy again. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> selfishly, I will take the $42,500 buy order and uh, hopefully get that filled and maybe we'll see it come down farther and I can nibble on some more. Now, I want to share this chart with you here. This is Bitcoin reserve risk. This is from the guys over at Glass Nodes. They say, in our latest Uncharted, we addressed the growing confidence in Bitcoin. So basically, a low reserve risk, as we have right now for Bitcoin, equals high long-term holder confidence plus low price. So basically, we have an incredible amount of long-term holders who are holding their Bitcoin. They have not sent it to exchanges to sell. In fact, we have more people buying Bitcoin all the time. The entities keep going up. Um, you know, Terra keeps buying Bitcoin, which we're going to talk about here in a second. And the price, of course, still pretty cheap. We're still well under the all-time high for Bitcoin. People have been accumulating. I've been accumulating. Like I said, as so long as Bitcoin keeps trading under the 200-day simple moving average, I'm going to keep buying. I'm going to keep accumulating, man. Keep nibbling on some sats. By the way, if you'd like to earn a safe and simple passive income, 
remember, you don't have to be trading the market. Everybody thinks you got to be trading every little move. You have to be shorting the, shorting all the time or longing all the time or be in trades all the time. You don't have to be. Sometimes you can just sit back and relax and earn some safe, simple passive income. It's a pretty nice way to just gain on your gains. Celsius is a great place to do that. 5% on your Bitcoin, 5.35% on your Ethereum. Great rates on stable coins and a wide range of altcoins. And you'll get 50 bucks in free Bitcoin if you sign up using the link down below in the description. Now, let's go ahead and move on here. Bitcoin supply on exchanges continuing to fall fast. As we can see here, just keeps on gosh darn going down, man. And it's not going to come back up. I'm telling you, peak Bitcoin, it happened right here. This was peak Bitcoin. There's never going to be that much Bitcoin on exchanges ever again. 3.15 million Bitcoin was on exchanges. Well, we're down under 2.5 million now, and it's just going to keep falling. People understand the value proposition of Bitcoin. People keep gobbling up Bitcoin at these prices. Accumulation has been happening. And guess who's just started accumulating some more gosh darn Bitcoin? Well, the guys over at Terra, this is the Terra Bitcoin address. Currently, you can see they have 35,767 Bitcoin. So they bought about uh, 5,000 Bitcoin yesterday. So they obviously saw some price discounts and decided to pile in. Now they bought their Bitcoin probably around here. Unfortunately for them, this new stuff from the Federal Reserve came out and down goes the price. So these are probably one of their first major purchases that uh, immediately went in to the red. But realistically, I don't think Terra is trying to play the short-term game here. These guys are literally stacking up Bitcoin with an eye of having one of the biggest Bitcoin treasuries of anybody anywhere. They want to be the number one holder. As I mentioned yesterday, they want to be buying Bitcoin in perpetuity, constantly stacking Bitcoin. Now, they have about another 1.6, maybe, uh, billion dollars, 1.7 billion dollars, something around there, maybe 1.5, whatever. About half their money still to buy Bitcoin with. So with their first 3 billion that they were greenlit for, they're going to end up stacking around 70,000, probably a little more than that, uh, Bitcoin. Buying's not done. Their buying is not done. I imagine they're probably going to be doing some more buying now that we've seen these price corrections happening due to the fear in the market. Now, of course, we have to talk about the old gosh darn S&P 500, man. I feel like our correlation to the equity markets remains very, very strong. We are seeing um, Bitcoin tracing very closely to the S&P 500. When it goes up, we go up. When it goes down, we go down faster. So the S&P 500 is down 1% today. Bitcoin's down, what, 5 or 6%. Altcoins are down 20%. Because crypto, man. Because crypto. Old correlations. And of course, what's spooking the equity markets? Well, the Federal Reserve is spooking the equity markets. That is who. So we had the uh, minutes released from the Fed meeting recently, and a few interesting things came out of that. Now, in particular, it came out that they're going to raise interest rates at a um, higher percentage later on. So the first interest rate hike was only 0.25%. Now, initially, apparently, they had wanted to do 0.5%. But they held back on that bigger rate hike simply because of all the uncertainty around the Ukraine situation. But it would seem like their next raises are going to be 0.5% and the same moving forward. So that means that um, the rate hikes will happen twice as fast because they're raising at uh, 0 0.5 instead of 0.25% for future rate hike highs, rate hikes. Assuming, of course, there's not some other drama that makes them not to do that uh, for the next meeting, but that seems to be the plan at the moment. But that that's one thing that kind of spooked the market a little bit. But the real thing from the Fed announcement spooking the damn market is that currently the Fed is sitting on $9 trillion worth of assets. It's a lot of money worth of stuff. Now, they have said they're going to start rolling these off, so to speak. Now, the 
reality for most of these is that like all their, um, you know, a lot of those things are uh, simply going to expire, right? So they're going to come up to the end of the treasury and it's going to expire and that's it. And they're simply not going to renew it and buy it again, right? They're just going to let these things kind of come to the end of their term and not renew their interest in them. So that's one way that they're going to bring down their balance sheet. Now that shouldn't spook anybody too much because it essentially means that it's kind of neutral, right? They're not selling anything. They're also not buying anything. They're just letting things come down gradually. That shouldn't be a problem for the markets, if you ask me. Now, what is a potential problem for the markets is this. The Fed said it will be appropriate to consider selling mortgage-backed securities. As Adam Cochran points out, this is a bold and hawkish statement. It's something we've never seen as part of quantitative tightening. It's something a lot of uh, Wall Street was shrugging off. Now, if they start selling mortgage-backed securities, again, they got $9 trillion, man. $9 trillion in assets sitting on the Fed balance sheet. If they start unloading mortgage-backed securities, that could have a very strong gravity-catching effect, we could say, for the equity markets. And if the equity markets get hit by such a thing, well, then crypto markets are probably going to follow right along with it because that's what we normally freaking do. And all of Do Kwan's Bitcoin buying for the Terra Foundation may not be enough to save us from the pressures of the Federal Reserve. We shall see, though. And that is not confirmed that they're going to be selling the mortgage-backed securities. They're simply looking at, right now, up to $95 billion a month of existing treasuries, 60 billion of treasuries and 35 billion of mortgage-backed securities simply being rolled off, which is a, a much gentler process that shouldn't really freak anyone out. That's just letting these products come to term and then not renewing them. Big difference to, hey, let's actually sell our mortgage-backed securities. So we'll see if we get any clarification from that at the next Fed meeting. Obviously, that's spooking the market because they start dumping billions upon billions of mortgage-backed securities into the markets, it's going to drag the whole damn equity market down. And I don't think that the Fed would necessarily want to do that, even though they've said it's a possibility. I'm not sure it's the, the action that they're going to take realistically, because I don't think they want to crash the stock markets necessarily, and that probably would. But these two things, the, the, the fear that they may sell their mortgage-backed securities, and of course that the rate hikes will happen faster than previously anticipated, are what are spooking the markets today. Now, I want to share as a closing thought this uh, tweet from DC Investor. He said, better to be prepared for a max pain scenario than hope it does not happen. Uncertainty in all markets right now. We have inflation. We have the credit cycle, uh, the, the Federal Reserve, and all the stuff we just talked about. So, as he says, don't assume one outcome. Be prepared for any outcome. We are living in pretty crazy times at, at the macroeconomic level right now. And as bullish as I am on cryptocurrencies, it is important to keep an open mind to the risks in the market right now and understand that things get a little bit crazy depending on some of these different levers that are being pulled at the macro level right now. We still have all the stuff going on in Ukraine, the potential oil price spikes and all that that could possibly come out of that situation. The inflation is still out of control, 7.9% in the US, 7.5% in the Eurozone. Key consumer goods, food, fuel, rent up between 20, 30, 40% for a lot of stuff. Like there's a lot of economic pain going on. And with regular people having to spend so much more money to buy their day-to-day -day necessities, a lot less money that they have to, you know, ape into dog coins, for example, to you know, pump the markets up. Still people out there have money to do that. But, you know, it's not the, the good, easy money times that we had when the Fed was buying up all the stuff. The stock markets were pumping, the crypto markets were pumping. We have a lot more risk in the market right now. And because of that, it's a time to play the market potentially a little more conservatively in order to protect your capital. So just, you know, 
closing thought there for the video for today. Anyway, you let me know what you think about the price action, what the heck the Fed is doing down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.